Hey guys, what's up? It's Tom. Uh, sorry I've been gone for a while. I've been working really hard the past couple years since I started this audio post-production series. And uh, it's been a crazy year or two. I've gotten to work on some big shows uh, like John Wick 4 and The Last of Us uh, and a couple others. You can check my IMDb for somewhat up-to-date credits. Uh, and then, then the strikes hit and I got a bunch of time to basically do kind of what I want. There wasn't any union work. So I actually built this space that we're in right here um, from the ground up. I built the studio. It's not huge. Um, it's It was pretty cheap. Cost me under 12 grand US to build it from the bottom all the way to the, the shingles on the roof, the sound treatment, HVAC system, electrical, did everything myself. It was a really good experience. And um, and also, if the strikes continue, then maybe I can take those skills and go swing a hammer on a construction site for a while. So who knows when those are going to be fixed. But uh, I'm going to try, now that I've got some more time, to do more audio post-production videos. And one of the subjects that's come up quite a bit in the comments uh, and Facebook and online and other places is loudness. And I cover a little bit of that in my mixing videos about different loudness specs and how to decide like, well, how loud overall should my project be? If it's a short film or a podcast or, you know, even a song or a feature film, maybe the film is going to play in theaters. Maybe it's mostly going to go to streaming. Maybe you've got to cover both and you've got to worry about film festivals. So today I wanted to go over loudness specs and how to efficiently make sure you're hitting whatever loudness spec you need to in Pro Tools. There's, to me, there's kind of a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way, and it's always frustrating seeing people uh, tell others, like, that are just starting out, like, well, oh, just throw it into this uh, loudness monitor plugin that will change the level of your mix. So we're going to go over how to do it kind of uh, the professional way that makes fixes easy, and that makes sure that you're, what you're hearing at the end of your mix is exactly what goes to air or goes online and there's no wonky uh you know processing in between so let's jump right in if your question is how loud should my video be even if it's not a video maybe it's a podcast or song mix whatever i googled it for you and here is a real basic these are average levels so these aren't peak levels these are average levels. It's on rtw.com. I have no idea. But th this is the first Google result. So I think the text is big enough where you guys can see it on the video. But Spotify loud, you've got Amazon Alexa, YouTube. YouTube can tend to be minus 14 or minus 16. They do normalize content on ingest. So my videos like, I don't even think I care about the spec because I know they're going to normalize it. So if you're doing YouTube stuff, you could probably try to hit minus 14 or minus 16. Um, this one, minus 16 for Apple, I think that's their podcast, because uh, the podcasts I've mixed have had to average minus 16. Sony Entertainment, this was for like Crackle, I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, and then minus 23 is the EU broadcast standard, minus 24 is the US TV, also the Amazon Prime, and I think uh, like Paramount Plus and a bunch of the other streaming networks, it's minus 24 is the average they want you to hit. And then Netflix is kind of the odd man out and they like minus 27. That's just the dialogue. So it's minus 27 dialogue gated. And generally a safe true peak for most of these is minus two true peak. Make sure you are using a true peak limiter because they'll flag it if you don't. Um, some of them, like some broadcast, they want minus six true peak or minus four. So minus two is safe. But if you get a spec sheet, just follow whatever's on there. If not, go ahead and do minus two. It gives you enough uh, enough headroom if it's true peak where it shouldn't it shouldn't clip. So again, these are averages, but there you go. There's your answer for how loud should it be. If it's just for web stuff, I'd say minus 16. If it's broadcast, minus 24, unless it's Netflix and then minus 27. But I found that sometimes you have something that hits both of these specs just based on the way it's mixed. So they're kind of sort of interchangeable. This is, since this is just dialogue, dialogue tends to not be the loudest thing. Usually music and sound effects are pretty loud, hopefully not too loud, but that's why um, you can have something that actually hits both of these specs. And when you get to that level, you're a pretty good mixer. So 
how? How do, how do I get my project to those specs? The worst way to do it is to just mix however you want and then send it to Isotope and then use loudness control. Uh, don't do that because if you do that, what happens when the director says, hey, I want you to change this one line? Well, now you have to re-export everything, assuming you're not just exporting a stereo mix, but like everything. You have to export that whole thing for one line and you have to reprocess it and you're going to end up with like, you know, triple the amount of files you need to have. Whereas if you just printed everything in your Pro Tools session, you could just destructively punch in, you know, enable pre and post roll here, make sure the little D is on the record enable and punch in the files. It updates them, change the, the label on them to be whatever the date is. Bam, you're done. It's super fast. It's the way we've been working for like since I started 15 years ago. So there's nothing wrong with the old school ways like this. You don't even have to do the faster than real time bounce. Just you can do this. And what's cool about doing it this way is the way I have my session set up. This is a commercial where the client said, hey, I have a broadcast commercial for you to mix, but we need a, a web mix too. So I told him, that's fine. I'm going to charge you a little bit extra for the web mix. But, you know, I got a little bit of extra money for it. And with very little extra effort, there's a web mix in my session. It's not a separate mix. I don't have to do anything different for it, except for I duplicated my my stereo print master. In other words, I duplicated this guy right here. I created a new bus that I called Web Cruncher. And then... I changed the settings on the limiter. The great thing about the Avid Pro limiter is it tells you the integrated. So I could play the mix. I'll play it for you guys. I don't think I can let you hear it, but I can play it for you and um, show you that right here, like it's averaging minus 14 to minus 16. And then I'll also bring up the broadcast mix uh, where is it? So you can see them. So I just brought the threshold down to minus 12. And I brought the ceiling down just for extra safety. So broadcast mix is minus 23.2. And the web mix is minus 15.3. So they're within a dB of the spec. And I didn't have to do a separate mix. I got a little bit of a pay bump on it with like hardly any extra work and it makes changes super easy. I don't have to punch into two different mixes. I mean, I do, but it's like all stacked up in one group, you know, it's not duplicated or anything. So anytime I can make my job easier, especially on a commercial where you get a ton of notes on stuff, then I will, I will take that opportunity and do that. I generally won't do this for a feature film or a TV show. Uh, I'll like try to get some more time to actually mix it because it's a longer, more artistic project. But for a commercial or something short, duplicate the bus, use either a limiter or a compressor. Make sure you check it so you're not hitting it too hard. You'll be able to hear if the compressor or limiter is working too hard. Uh, and just get it up to spec and bam, then you've got your broadcast mix, you've got your web mix, you've got all your stems, 5.1 mix 5.1 stems stereo stems web mix all in one session super easy to make changes no monkeying around with like exporting to isotope and then processing and hey there's another change now i have to make 27 more files uh to meet you know two different specs you can all just do it in one session and it's it just makes your job a lot easier so this is how i hit loudness specs in pro tools um, I've kind of switched away from using Insight just because it it uses more resources and I don't need all like this extra, like this is cool. And I'm sure producers that come in would love to see all these funky dials and stuff and the spectrogram and sound field. All I need is the number. So bam, that's gone. I really just use this ProLimiter. That's it. That's all I need to check um, the integrated and the true peak. So uh, yeah, make sure you're using a true peak limiter, make sure you're monitoring your mix 
And that is how you will be able to meet specs. Also, you know, make sure your monitors are calibrated and don't touch that dial. Once this, the, your, your room is calibrated and your monitors are at the level that makes the specs sound comfortable to you, not too loud, not too quiet, but just right, don't touch the knob. If you get to something that's too loud, turn the tracks down or the bus, like you can do it on the bus too. But the, the idea is that you do not change your calibration after it's done, unless you're switching from, you know, like broadcast to web to feature, then yeah, but make sure you have like the settings marked or something. So you're always going back to zero on your calibration. Otherwise, you'll do what I did and miss it. And then you'll have to go back and adjust the buses because I'm not perfect. I hope this video has helped you guys figure out uh, what loudness your project needs to be, some different ways to achieve that in Pro Tools. You could apply these to other DAWs like Cubase or Nuendo or Logic or even something like uh, Final Cut or, or um, Premiere or Resolve. Like It doesn't really matter what program you're using. The most important thing is to make sure that on, your, on the end of your chain, basically the output of your, your mix track, your composite of all, you know, all your stems, you have some kind of tool to tell you what your loudness is. And just to keep an eye on that while you're mixing, don't feel like you have to mix to that like all the time, like every second has to be minus 24, but just make sure that you've got it up and you can train your ears to kind of hear where the pocket is for loudness. Uh, and of course that takes things like a calibrated room and making sure that you know there's consistent signal chains and stuff like that. But the most important thing is just just mix to the spec. That way you're not having to kind of remix or reprocess after. So stay tuned guys for more vids. I'll try to make time for that. Um, I'm also, fingers crossed, getting some more work soon. So the videos will obviously take a lower priority once that comes in. But thank you guys for watching. Appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.